And in my opinion, women can do it. Women want a new world. Women want new ideas, and women intend to get them. Women have shown what they could do in war, and now that the fighting is over, women intend to show the world what they can do in peace. And we have always felt like that. And now that the fighting is over and the war is won, the little dears can, uh, can get back to their pots and pans. <laughs> and now, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, I ask you to be upstanding and drink to the health of the ladies. God bless them. But what does this chap really think about women's place after the war? When he talks about the ladies, he means the little woman, that household angel who stayed at home, raised a family, and humored her husband. Nowadays, the little woman goes off to her part-time job at the factory and leaves the old man to cope with things before he goes on the night shift. not very good at coping, is he? And why should he be? Running a house and looking after children is women's work. And a full-time job, too. Woman's place is in the home. It's more comfortable for everybody that way. Though it can be a bit dull when the wife will discuss her battle with the butcher. <laughs> dull, is it? Well, if mother does get a bit limited in her conversation, it's just because her place is in the home. That eternal routine of cooking and clearing up isn't exactly thrilling, you know. The children are a full-time interest when they're small, but they grow up, go to school, and don't need so much attention. A job outside her own four walls would be a tonic, and the pay would be often handy. During the war, women who got married were allowed to remain on in jobs from which they would automatically have been sacked in peacetime, such as teaching and the civil service. Do you think that married women should continue to work for pocket money while there are men unemployed? What about the child, this woman? She gossips and plays bridge because she's got nothing better to do. <laughs> what a waste of time. If her domestic responsibilities are small, surely she's needed to help with the thousands of civic and national jobs be done outside the home. There's nothing new, after all, about women working for money. The farmer's wife does it, and her grandmother did it too. So did plenty of others who helped to feed the family by spinning and weaving. It's different now. War showed women what they can do. they're capable of physical endurance and of mental concentration. So now mother makes her own money and decides how she will spend it. She makes her own friends too, outside the home. There isn't much glamour about this independence. Women at work are getting to look and behave more like men. It's not very attractive. And they're creating so many problems that often they're more trouble than they're worth. During the war, women were needed desperately and urgently. There wasn't time to train them. Here is the result, a system which breaks down a skilled job into a series of simple steps. fellows train for years to master the complicated processes which half a dozen girls can learn in as many minutes to do between them. It's disheartening to the man with a pride in his craft. Money is the worst snag of all. 
Women in industry are often a danger to men's employment. They cost less in wages, so they have a better chance of getting the job. Soldiers of the last war remember that women at work were a menace. swamped the labor market and held on to the jobs while men walked the streets trying to sell bootlaces. Women would not be an industrial danger if they worked under fair conditions. We are agitating now for equal pay for equal work. If they're paid the same wages as men for the same job, Undercutting disappears. Uh, it isn't a fair principle. Now look at this young family man. He's figuring out how to keep a wife and a couple of children. While the girls are wondering if it will stretch to a new hat. This is the great and worthy order of British spinsters. They work to earn their own living. Do you believe they should be paid on the same scale as the chap whose wages have to feed, clothe and educate a family? Girls leaving school often go into jobs without a future. And some people think this is a bad thing. But does it really matter? Most of them want to get married. The job is only a stopgap until the right man comes along. Sometimes he never comes along. You can't bet on marriage. Anyway, these girls might become widows or get divorced. They might have children to provide for. Why shouldn't older women do the blind alley jobs? Every girl should go into an occupation with decent prospects for the future. But the fact is that most women do get married. And like it, idyllic, isn't it? Women's place is in the home, all right. But it's in industry, too. Woman's place after the war is all over the place. She has a part to play everywhere in making the world what she believes it ought to be. She knows how people should live. How children ought to be reared. She knows how to help the boss. And keep her husband happy. She's got quite a job, hasn't she? Therefore, ladies, amidst our domestic ties, let us never forget our paramount responsibility. To help in building a new way of life for the whole great family of Britain. It's all right, nothing serious. Only she'll be a little late for baby's last bottle. Well, there's the problem. And what's the solution? Home and industry. Can they be combined? Women managed it during the war, but what are they going to do now? Should they stay at home? Or if they go out to work, what sort of job should they do? What sort of pay should they get? This is a man's worry too. It affects everybody. What do you think about it?